thank you for the first speaker. You mentioned about the Muslim and Christian the, about happiness. So I don't know how about your country in Ghana, the population of uh, the percentage of inhabitants of uh, the Muslims and Christians, and the Muslims, whether they belong to poverty or uh, richer, I don't know. And then how would you come to the conclusion that the uh, Muslim is happier than Christian? Uh, because of uh, religion or because of other, would you elaborate? Uh, the next question? Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, perhaps, okay. Yeah. Um, robustness tests for your variables, for your results. Um, um, yeah, for the second presentation also, if I may, were there any um, control sort of about the villages uh, talking to each other about the experience of um, watching the, the documentaries? And um, I'm interested in whether the tests have been done individually, as in the, um, did the villagers go see the movies all together in one group, those who had the tickets? Or did they do that individually, as in times where they chose? And um, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, the next, any other question? OK. Please wait for the yeah. microphone. You, um, maybe on, I have just yes, minor uh, comments on the first two. Uh, maybe one of, uh, like as a follow-up, maybe if the majority of your population are Christians, I think. If the majority of your people are unhappy, then, <laughs> then in the econometrics itself, I don't know. Uh, but one very important thing, especially for rural society, uh, they may, there are many variables which might affect uh, actually the degree of your happiness, even time. You know, human mood, mood and is quite variable sometimes in any way. For example, age. Some people will tell you, if you ask their aspirations, they tell you that I'm waiting to die. I'm waiting for days, you know. That could maybe ge include gender plus age for example. Now, some people might have children, and they do, they do see some potentiality in their children. Because, if you have, because they are, children are, especially in rural societies, children are your investments. Even if you are of not much, uh, you know, good, probably you might see something in your children and be happy about it. Maybe do, type of domestic conflict, whether they even if you are married, maybe have, you are having a conflict with your spouse. So I think there are these kinds of things which probably not mainly captured there, but which a bit worries me. If, you know, what the subject is quite complex because the degree of happiness might, with, with individuals even might change from time to time. That is the first paper. The second paper, uh, I, I think I was thinking, what if I go and do the same thing? and try on uh, <laughs> other places, and then I got worried. So that, I have to read that paper very well, but uh, it is quite impressive, and what if I do that? M maybe one of the things I, I start to uh, think for myself is that people might psychologically respond to my treatment, because I, I, I treat them today. Next time I go and ask for something, if they do not give me some sort of good aspiration, they may feel embarrassed. <laughs> At least they have to give me some requirement for credit or something like everything. Or some people might think, okay, especially in aid-dependent rural communities where now foreign everything is there, probably if I, some people might think, okay, they might respond psychologically that probably if I need for credit and everything based on something might be coming. I don't know how I have to control this. Probably after it's a paper in detail, but I may be quite naive for this question. But that is the way I start to think. Maybe if my, my treatment self might, might even make psychologically, uh, you know, respond to my treatment. That is the worry uh, 
I was having to myself when I was, if, yeah, that's uh, see. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other question? Okay, so. I, I think my question is on the, was it the second one about the Ethiopian case? Okay, uh, I wanted to find out were the documentaries shown at the same time to the 18, the 18 villages at the same time or they were uh, done one at a time? Um, basically, in the context of the village, there's the possibility of reporting what happened, what we did this evening from the people that came from the city, that type of thing, uh, in the context of... Uh, comparing with those that were not given or not, were not shown the, the documentaries. Again, the, the other aspect that I wanted to find out from you uh, is the content of the documentaries. For example, were they in the form of uh, the, the people that were in the, the, the documentaries advising the communities to have higher hopes or aspirations, or were they just showing their life uh, their history of what they've gone through, or what was the nature of, of the documentary uh, itself. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other question, or maybe we... Okay. Just one. Okay. A question to Mariano. You present the result with uh, OLS regression, which so you assume that uh, satisfaction is a cardinal uh, but uh, don't you think that it should be rather ordinal and you could have, you should or could have used the uh, ordinal probit or ordinal logic rather than OLS? Okay, uh, uh, maybe we just have the, uh, uh, the presenter. I respond to uh, this round of questions and then we can come back for the next round. So who would like to go first? Okay, please go ahead. Okay, so thank you for the question on, for example, interaction variables. Um, I actually tested a few, I did a few interactions, for example, trying to see whether the, ex the degree of, you know, probability would vary if you interact a variable like, say, uh, operating a, a farm plot with, say, uh, a non-farm activity. Uh, but I've concentrated a bit more on the uh, variables that were showing signs of uh, some positivity, but I think uh, it's proper to also take into consideration some of the other demographic variables and interact them to see how they respond to that. So it's a good point and a good observation. I appreciate it. Um, Ghana actually has... Um, According to the recent uh, census that has been, that was done in 2010, uh, the Christian population is still in the majority, uh, with close to about 70% of the population being Christian. And the selection of households to uh, benefit from the cash transfer is really not based on any of those variables. It's purely based on the the, of course, application of the uh, poverty line and those who fall within that. And even at the community level, uh, beyond, because it is a selection of the poor, uh, the poorest of the poor. And so people within the community are also used to identify people in their opinion uh, really poor. And it doesn't just end there, they, they actually kind of match that with the data to be sure that they are getting the right people. And so it's not really, uh, that's why I said that we're not too sure what, you know, the Muslim households might be doing, but it could be a certain way of life. And, and knowing that it's a, a co community-related way of taking care of oneself, 
uh, if I know someone is poor, how we go about things might be slightly different. Again, like I said, the result there was not that robust, uh, and so um, I didn't want to dwell so much on it, but I just thought that there was some direction that we need to pay attention to. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for all, uh, good questions. Uh, I will try to answer them as they uh, came. The first one links uh, with the design of uh, uh, the experiment, in particular how the shows were, uh, the screenings happen. So there are uh, three groups, as I said. Uh, one is the documentary group or the treatment group. Uh, the second is the placebo group, and the third is the control group. So the first, uh, always screening happens with the documentary group, while uh, those who are going to attend the placebo group are gathering separately. Once the screening is completed, the uh, uh, control group would be interviewed, while the placebo group watches. So the two uh, do, not, do, not, uh, do not have any contact. And at the same time, the control group, which is not invited to the, any of these screenings, were being interviewed at all, at the same time. Uh, the, we didn't screen at the same time everywhere. That is technically impossible, because we have uh, 64 villages and uh, uh, 16 screening sites. So we divided them into 16 screening sites and were uh, going, uh, uh, showing the, the movies and the, 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 the documentary and the, the, uh, uh, and the, the survey. And the, we are not worried about spillover effects so to such extent because of only this, because the villages are relatively remote to, remote to uh, uh, one another. In terms of peer effects, we have two measures of peers. The first is we asked every respondent to identify four of their best friends, uh, uh, and we, we, we recorded who they, uh, they were. And uh, uh, we also have, uh, and this is used in a, in, a, in, a, in a certain way I'll describe very sh uh, shortly. And then we varied the intensity, the, what we call the village treatment, we varied the number of people who are invited to uh, the screening of either the placebo or the documentary uh, uh, in each village. So some villages are uh, placebo in intense villages because 18 more household horses, in principle 36 individuals are invited to the placebo screening. These were not interviewed, but they were invited. And in another village, uh, we have 18 households invited to the uh, doc documentary screening. And again, that village would be uh, a treatment intense village. We divided the villages into equally into uh, these two. So we have 32 treatment uh, intensive uh, villages and equal number of placebo intensive villages. And so we have interactive terms. So using this village treatment, we, can, we, we test whether peers affect, because uh, the more people there are subject to these screenings, the greater the likelihood of uh, spillovers. So uh, we, have, uh, we have that. We did not get significant impact. And instead, we also measure peer effect in terms of the number of best friends who uh, are uh, invited to the placebo or invited to the, the, the documentary. And we detect some effect, some significant, significant effect of peers, uh, uh, treated peers on uh, expenditure uh, on school, uh, uh, children's schooling. Correlates of gender, uh, correlates of aspirations, expectations like gender, age, education exist. Uh, and uh, local economy characteristics. These are controlled in our, all in our uh, ANCOVA uh, uh, measures. So yes, these influences exist, but we control, we control uh, for them. I, I suppose you are thinking in terms of the Hawthorne effect. Uh, so a number of, I mean, there is no uh, 
100% way of eliminating that, but with the fact that we use placebo, we have randomized both at the village and the uh, local le at the household level uh, that uh, all these documentaries uh, are from successful people who achieved uh, what they have achieved without support from NGOs or uh, government. And they are, some are farming, and others are a little bit of uh, petty trading and so on. So, and in all this, we have no promise uh, uh, to support any, or to provide any support. Suggest that the Hawthorne effect or similar effects may be uh, limited. Again, related to the content, uh, they narrate their life. They don't advise. They uh, uh, do not provide uh, any uh, a specific advice of being successful. So they just describe their, their life. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe the, okay, Maria. Yeah, just a, a technical mm -hmm. question. Uh, the, the response scale for both the, the life satisfaction and the life evaluation was in a one to 10 scale. So you, you could argue that this is cardinal, easy to interpret, uh, in a cardinal way, but, but uh, it's correct. You, you can assume that this is a, a categorical response scale and then you can use order probit, and we have done that. And, uh, but, but it's more difficult to, to explain the results and to interpret because you need to, to define a, a response category and a representative person and talk in terms of marginal effects. But uh, the, the general results, usually when you work with subjective well-being data, um, even if you treat the variable as cardinal or as ordinal, the main results sustain. You know? uh, so, so that depends on the audience, whether you use cardinal or ordinal. OK, uh, thank you very much. Uh, maybe before we go for the next round of questions, I would just like to ask uh, Alebayo, how generalizable are these results? Uh, because uh, you chose six months uh, to go back and uh, evaluate. So if, we, if you had chosen perhaps a year, uh, would we have seen any effect? Uh, and then you also selected a number of uh, characteristics uh, where, or variables when you were doing your regression analysis. So if you had changed the choice set, uh, would it have also had an impact? So in other words, is, did your regression suffer from some omitted variable biases? Uh, so just think about that as we have uh, some questions from the audience as well. Uh, any questions? Any other questions? Uh, thank you very much. This is a kind of a thought. We are uh, talking about the poverty and happiness. But actually, happiness is nothing to do with the poverty. I was in Indonesia five years. Most of, most of them are very poor. But they are very, very happy every day because they know that they have fertile land. If they plant today banana, they will come banana tomorrow. So this is the expectation. I stayed in Kuwait, the richest country in the world, for five years. They are Muslim, inshallah. But same time, they are most unhappy people because they cannot go further. So depend, this is, uh, you mentioned about the poverty with the income, but there are many, many other things like uh, inheritance, intangible cultural heritage, background, tradition, uh, all these, uh, these things is also very, very important depending on which area, which circumstances. Thank you very much. Uh, any other question? Yes, please. Thank you for your presentations. I have a question for the third presenter. What do you consider the policy implications of the relative income, relative poverty that you measured? Thank you. Any other question? Okay, there is one at the back. I thank you for your presentation. When I was doing my research work, my supervisor used to say that there are a few differences between life satisfaction and subjective well-being or happiness. And he asked me to figure out that I'm surprised concerning the third presentation, 
or the, the two middle, second and third, that they are the same. Well, um, subjecting well-being and life satisfaction. So I don't know if you can make, help me to understand the few differences my supervisor was talking about. I don't know if you get my point. Thank you very much. Uh, any other question? Before we give the opportunity to, okay, so maybe we give the opportunities to uh, the speakers to respond. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so the, the chair's question I think relates to external validity in more broadly. Uh, there is no uh, perfect way of uh, ensuring generalizability. Uh, what we uh, try uh, to have done is to uh, focus on uh, key dimensions that uh, are important uh, in uh, most most places: uh, income, uh, standard of living, uh, social status, and uh, children's education, and also try to uh, link them with uh, again factors that are considered uh, considered important. And then you have the standard rules of uh, running a randomized controlled trial, so on and so forth, which uh, in addition to uh, enhancing internal validity, will have some, some uh, uh, importance, uh, some credence to uh, generalizability. But as I said, this is, this is quite, uh, uh, the message perhaps is about the approach rather than the specific results or the specific estimates that uh, uh, we talked about. In terms of omitted variable bias, what we tried, of course, to do is that, again, there is no perfect way of uh, uh, dealing with that, but we started by, uh, f from a list of uh, uh, the usual suspects, link uh, uh, with aspirations, test for that, and those that, are, uh, uh, that come out significant are controlled, controlled for. That is, that is the defense uh, that uh, we have. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, the first comment has to do, was a comment, uh, basically indicating that there are a lot more factors that potentially could influence the happiness level of, and so there's need to uh, throw in a bit more, var some more variables if the data allows. And like I indicated before the presentation, this is work in progress, and so, we're going to throw a bit more variables, and of course, with all these comments, factor them in to make it a better one. Um, the question on the difference between life satisfaction and subjective well-being and happiness, uh, the data I am using for my piece of work um, does not have the breakdown, but based on the literature, uh, we're using this interchangeably um, to, to, to mean the same thing, uh, to enable us to do what we are doing. So it's purely um, the respondents or the household's own self-assessment, which is purely subjective uh, as to what, whether or not they think they're happy. And so that is what we're using. So we're actually using it interchangeably in our literature. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, re regarding our policy implications, I think, Jacques presented one, which is to start understanding poverty not as an absolute line, but as a line that depends also on the context, no? And of course, this will have policy implications for uh, what some people call identifying the poor. I, I prefer to use the word classifying people as poor because that's what we do. We do not identify poor people. There are people not poor or rich, and the methods we use classify some people as poor or as non-poor, and then we change the methodology, and that implies changing those who we consider. Uh, actually, when we say we consider them poor, what we are really saying is we consider them uh, in need of some social attention. No, that, that's basically social problems. But there is something very important here, and that's that happiness life satisfaction, there are differences, but and we have studied the difference between happiness and life satisfaction. Happiness has a larger affective content than life satisfaction. Basically, that's the difference. Uh, life satisfaction or happiness uh, 
is also a, a source of motivation. People are motivated and people act looking for happiness. When they marry, when they change jobs, when they move to another city or country, migrate, um, they are pursuing happiness. So motivations are important because sometimes we think that people, the beneficiaries of social programs, are there like bricks. And we can do whatever we want with social policy. And they, we don't expect the reaction. We think that what we do is good and they will consider that as good and they will accept that. Uh, understanding their happiness and understanding that this is relative allows us to, to understand phenomena such as uh, in Latin America, uh, pro-market reforms. Economists say they are very good because uh, income is rising. But we find that people are frustrated and they are, they are voting for uh, new parties, even for uh, leftist parties. They reject the reforms that, according to the indicators we use, we assume that they are good. No? So uh, I think this allows us to understand also how people re will react, what is important to them, and to design policy according to, to what is important to them, not to us. And another point which is important here is to look for policies that uh, focus on absolute impacts. No? Um, there are things like leisure. Leisure is not relative. Uh, the well-being you get from leisure is absolute. It doesn't matter whether your colleagues have more or less leisure time, no free time. So that, that kind of policy, rather than focusing on rising income, you can expand the, the, the options of instruments and make of other instruments that are more absolute than income part of your strategy in policy making. Thank you very much. Uh, may I say that uh, if you define a utility function where my uh, happiness or well-being depends on uh, my absolute income and the relative income, the underlying assumption is that I have very good knowledge about what the average income of the reference group is or some distribution of that income. Now, if you empiricize this type of model uh, in a situation where someone may not even be familiar with what the average income of people in the same age group, the same uh, maybe uh, belonging to the same gender group is, then uh, aren't we uh, making a very strong assumption here? Uh, well, we, because of lack of data, we took as, as reference income the median or the or the mean income, but uh, that doesn't exclude it in future research. We may take as reference income something which is uh, maybe which replies your question, like uh, people who live in your neighborhood, so you know how to relate to them, or people who work with you. The only problem I see with this is that you're going to have a, a poverty line which will be, you know, which will depend on, e on each individual. So, uh, you know, the, the intention, I think, is good to get close, but I think that the, from a policy point of view, this would not be, you know, uh, applicable, I think. Okay, please, go ahead. Uh, well, you are here, you can hear me. <laughs> uh, so, given your... Uh, two axioms, uh, the results follow in, in principle. Uh, uh, why did you choose those two axioms? Why did you choose, for instance, how do you motivate? I mean, maybe I missed it, but how do you motivate? The, the, uh, uh, the intuition that, uh, you know, what happened when your income and the reference income increased by the same amount then uh, what we assumed is that utility will also increase, but not the, you know not the utility not this you know it's not in, in in dollar terms. So we we have to assume that it increases because the the rel the, the impact of the reference income doesn't change because my income and the reference income uh, and the reference income increase by the same amount. So that, for example, in the first approach, the difference doesn't change, but my income increase or so utility has has to increase. Now, uh, so this is, 
Why proportional? Uh, now, I didn't do the axiomatic derivation, so I cannot, uh, I'm not sure I can uh, answer 100% your, your question. Uh, I think these are axioms which you find in, 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 you know, in the whole axiomatic literature in inequality or poverty measurement, you have this kind of, of axiom. So uh, um, the question, I think the question is more important whether you like, uh, you know, you can, you can have, for example, a measure, whatever, of poverty inequality, you propose a measure, you look at the properties, okay? People, or many people prefer, you know, to do the reverse, that you define a certain number of axioms and you look for the measure which answer all these axioms. It is certainly cleaner from a mathematical point of view. Now, uh, sometimes the axiom selected, uh, you have some background idea on what the measure should be, and sometimes the choice, you know, I, I am frank with you, although I'm not an axiomatic. Uh, specialized axiomatization, but I work with people who have done axiomatization. Sometimes my discussion with them was that some of the axioms they use are, I, I have been selected, I am frank with you, have been selected because they give you the results you want to, to have. So it is, uh, mm -hmm. even if you take, you know, the, if you take, uh, for example, the past breaking paper by Serge Coleman in Equality Measurement in 1966, which was published in 1969, where he derived his measure of inequality, uh, it, it is clear that some of the axioms they were selected because it gives a convenient result. So I'd rather be frank with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the presenters, for uh, giving us this excellent presentations, and I hope you all uh, uh, agree with me. Uh, please join me to give them a round of applause for an excellent job done.